Today I have the pleasure of getting an update on Avalon Advanced Materials from Don Bubar. How are you today? Oh, fine, thanks. Pleasure to be back. Don, there's, we've had a number of very interesting stories. I, I really like the one that Laura Smith did on uh, saying it's crunch time and we're expecting results on your 2,000 meter drilling program that you announced in spring. Where are we at with this program? We're just waiting on analyses now. We've got all the core split and into the lab and waiting for the results to come back so then we can see what they all mean and tell us about the uh, mineralogy there in particular. The main reason we were doing it was to better understand the distribution of lithium there. Now that we know there's more than one lithium mineral in this resource, in addition to the pedalite, there's also the lapidolite and other lithium micas there that we never fully accounted for in our historical resource. And of course, Don, you have many years of leadership experience in the resource sector, and so your, your goals for your shareholders are very well defined, and I'm very impressed with the plan of action with your demonstration plan. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Well, you're right, Tracy. Uh, one thing I learned early on in the specialty minerals business is you've got to introduce the product to the market as early as you possibly can uh, so that it can get accepted and you can get those offtake agreements from potential customers that can then be relied upon to access the capital to build a full-scale operation. So we know we have the resource. We know that we, how to process it to make some of the lithium products that the market wants right now. So we feel the next step for us is to build a demonstration scale pilot plant to start making some of those materials, show that we can make them to meet the customer's expectations on product quality and specifications, and uh, then start delivering. And of course, we have a lot of new readers this year at Investor Intel this summer that are looking at new stories. They may not be familiar with Avalon Advanced Materials. And I liked the quote that you had about how you'll be building this lithium battery materials demonstration plant in Ontario, and this will establish Ontario as a new regional center for the production of critical materials. I mean, that sounded, that sounded interesting to me. Can you tell us just a little bit more and back us up? Well, the whole idea here and, uh, is to try to build on the fact that Ontario has positioned itself as a leader in clean, green technology. And we've been saying, well, why don't we build out the whole supply chain on the critical materials needed to enable this transition to uh, clean technology and, uh, and green energy? And because in Ontario, we do have all the critical materials. We've got the lithium, we've got the cobalt, we've got the graphite. So we've got all the critical materials here in the province that are needed in the cathode chemistries for lithium ion batteries. So the opportunity is there to create that supply chain right here in Ontario. And of course, you have a lot of architectural and operational experience. And I just want to take this moment to commend you on the new female board of director member that you have. That seemed very impressive to me. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yes, we're delighted to have Patricia Moore uh, join our board of directors. Uh, she has lots of experience in the mineral sector, commodities analyst at the Scotiabank for many, many years, and uh, is a fan of what's going on in the lithium space, and she was quite interested in our approach to business, embracing uh, sustainable development, uh, responsible resource development, and new uh, materials such as lithium in our business. And, we're delighted to have her on the board. Do you think that she was attracted as well to the offtake agreement you did with Lapidico? Do you mind giving us a bit of an update on that? Well, that conversation started well before then, but certainly that's another um, interesting new development in the business we have going forward in that we now have a company that is focused on making lithium carbonate from Lapidolite, which we had in the resource but never really appreciated for what kind of value that might bring to the overall resource at Separation Rapids. So we're continuing to uh, a dialogue with Lapidico on how we can work together to produce a Lapidolite concentrate for them to help them establish their business as a producer of lithium carbonate from this mineral. And of course with the full supply chain uh, uh, process in place, is this the reason you've got this Tin Indian project in Nova Scotia? This is a project that I've been working on for a long time, going back to 2005, where I saw an opportunity then to create value out of this past producing uh, mine site that closed prematurely in, in 1992. 
with a lot of resource left in the ground. And we've been looking at different business models on how we could actually restart operations there. Originally, we thought maybe we could recreate something at the original scale of a 10,000 ton per day open pit mining operation. That now looks a little bit too ambitious in terms of the cost structure, but we're realizing there's now an opportunity to look at something at a small scale, take advantage of some of the stockpile material waste dumps that were left on surface as opportunities to reprocess, extract value from those resources, and ultimately remediate the site while we're uh, making money doing it. So what should we anticipate in the upcoming quarter or two? Well, we'll have more news on uh, separation rapids as we move towards uh, implementing our, our vision with the demonstration scale pilot plant in Kenora results from the uh, drilling program and we're getting close to um, attracting a partner to work with us on the um, redevelopment of the East Kempville uh, tin project which offers the possibility of near-term cash flow uh, for us in perhaps uh, less than uh, two years by taking the approach we, uh, we are taking there. So for a small cap junior company without any revenue the possibility of near-term cash flow is very attractive for us and that will make us a sustainable business in the longer term. Well, we heard you, Don. Near-term revenue. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to see you again. Thanks for having me.